Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Premanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvase Shashunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Kato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti er bhavati naishtaki So, um, let's see. We were hearing Prahlad Maharaj offer prayers to Lord Nisringadev in previous class. Right? We heard Prahlad Maharaj offer nice prayers. Okay, just wait. Let me get my place. Okay, so after Prahlad Maharaj offered his prayers to Lord Nusringadev, uh, Lord Nusringadev replies to Prahlad, congratulating him on offering such nice prayers. He tells Prahlad, no? this is uh, chapter 9, text 52. My dear Prahlad, most gentle one, Best of the family of the Asuras, all good fortune unto you. I am very much pleased with you. 
it is my pastime to fulfill the desires of all living beings. And therefore, you may ask from me any benediction that you desire to be fulfilled. So this is the compassion of the Lord that he wants to please his devotees. Prahlad Maharaj had suffered so much and in spite of all the suffering he went through, he was able to offer such nice prayers to Lord Nisringadev. So now Lord Nisringadev wants to please Prahlad. So Lord Nisringadev said, I'm very pleased with you. That is the goal of life, the success of life, right? If, you can, if we can somehow please the Lord, then our life is successful. If you can just give some pleasure for the, the Lord or his pure devotees. So, Prahlad Maharaj was able to do that. So the Lord, Lord Nishingadi said, it's my pastime to fulfill the desires of all living beings. Yeah. People desire Maya. Right? They don't desire Krishna, they don't desire service, they just desire sense gratification. So they get some limited amounts of sense gratification, but they get all the troubles and trials and tribulations which, which go with it. They don't get the ultimate happiness, they don't get the real goal of life. They're lost in the material world. But that's what they desired. People desire to be an illusion. The desire to enjoy the dream of this material world. You try to tell them the truth, they don't want to hear it. Don't spoil my fun. <laughs> this is the mood of the atheists, the mood of the demons, the materialists. So Lord Nisringadev is asking Prahlad, any benediction you desire to be fulfilled. Usually people have many desires, many benedictions they want. You know, if we were to ask anybody, oh, they could give a big list, right? They go, usually people go to temples, they go to churches, they go to mo and they have a big list of all their desires, all the things they want. But Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj is not like that. Prahlad Maharaj is a pure devotee. He, he doesn't, he doesn't really, he's not, we'll hear how he replies to Lord Nisringadev. But it's, it's interesting to see how the Lord is so eager to fulfill the desires of everyone. Right. We say, man proposes, God disposes. So Lord Nisringadev said, yeah, I fulfill all their desires. People get what they want. They want to be in the lap of Maya, they get it. They're put right in the lap of Maya. So come to Lord Nisringadev and he can satisfy all the desires. Right? Prabhupada says, the Lord is Bhakta Vatsala. He's Bhaja Bhakta Vatsala Sri Guru Hari. Right? We sing every day the lunchtime song. Yeah? that the Lord reciprocates with the devotees, the desires of the devotees. So, the Lord is enjoying. It's his, it Lord, the Lord said it's his pastime to do this, you know. Pastime is his pleasure, you know. <laughs> he's, he's laughing at us and watching us as we struggle through this material existence. So, uh, he's asking Prahlad Maharaj, what can I do for you? You know, what, what would you like? What benediction you, would you like? Certainly, the Lord is very pleased. So, you know, somebody's very pleased with you. You could really take advantage of them. You could ask for the, you know, give me, you know, very, something very great, very huge. Just like when Lord Chaitanya was performing his... Uh, uh, what is it called? Sat uh, Mahaprakash, yeah, the Mahaprakash that 
for 21 hours sitting on the throne of Vishnu and fulfilling all the different desires, calling all different devotees to come and take benedictions. And Lord Chaitanya, was, Lord Chaitanya revealed to them how he knew everything, what they'd gone through and how he'd been there and helped them in their difficult situations. And now he's calling them, asking, what can I give you? And so, of course, Kolaveka Sridhar, he didn't want anything. He's sad, he's happy. I don't have much. <laughs> I don't have to, and I don't want much. I don't, I just want to continue what I'm doing. That's the happiness for a devotee. We may struggle, but as Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, the struggles which we undergo in our devotional service is our greatest pleasure, our greatest happiness. Materialistic people don't know what is real happiness. They have no idea what is happiness. It's just the illusion, the illusion of happiness, pleasing the senses. So we're trying to awaken people to understand these things. Not a very easy task. We have to, we had to convince ourselves, right? It took us also some time to be convinced there's no real happiness in this world. But gradually, gradually it, it, we can see it really, it, it makes sense. So Lord Nishringadev continues, my dear Prahlad, May you live a long time. One cannot appreciate or understand me without pleasing me. But one who has seen or pleased me has nothing more for which to lament for his own satisfaction. So Lord Nasringadev bless, blesses Prahlad Maharaj a long life. Not everybody wants that kind of blessing. <laughs> Long life, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Mark and Rishi got problems with that, right? Mark and Rishi got a benediction. He could live through the night of Brahma. Wow, that was really horrendous. He suffered so much going through the night of Brahma in the ocean of the devastation, no food, nothing. Finally, Surabi. He came to Surabhi Kunj and somehow he was able to get the milk from the Surabhi cow. And so a long life, that's what people want, right? Just like in China, they have a blessing like that. The China, they will say, Shobi Nanshan. I mean, may you live as long as the South Mountain. <laughs> How long does the South Mountain? Oh, it's a long time, you know. It's bad enough once you get over 50, 60, 70, the body starts to ache, you get tired so easily, you don't have a lot of energy anymore, difficult to dance in the kirtan, you know, the memory also is a problem what to speak of the eyes and the digestion and so many other problems which come and it increases, right? As you age more and more, all the problems just increase more and more. Ooh. Nothing to look forward to, is there? In the long life. Of course, Prahlad Maharaj is a Satya Yuga resident. This is in the Satya Yuga. So they all live a long time, right? So, not such a big problem for the Satya Yuga people because they're so pious, they're so religious, they're so uh, obedient to scriptures. It's not a, to live a long life. Oh, they all live a long life in Satya Yuga. Of course, we could say that's relative that what is a long life for somebody is not, it's not long compared to the demigods, compared to Brahma. It's not long compared to their life. Our lives are quite short, even in Satya Yuga. 
and Lord Narsingha Dev says, you can't, people cannot, cannot appreciate him unless they please him. So the Lord is understood only by devotional service. That is the point. That any other process to try to understand the Lord will never be successful. <laughs> I was listening to the very nice Hans Duras. You know, they interviewed him and in, uh, Siddhanta in, in America. He does his memories, interviews different things. So they just put on the, on the internet, they put Hans Duda being interviewed in his memories. And he was telling how uh, Prabhupada was giving class and somebody asked him, isn't there any other way? Is there only, only this one way, only bhakti? And Prabhupada said, just like if I take food, so, do I put it in my ear? Do I stick it up my backside? What do I do? What can you do with the food? You can only put it one place, right? You put it in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. And everybody just erupted. He answered her and said, everybody cracked up, you know, a prophet selling like this, you know. There's only one way to eat food. You put it in your mouth. There's no other way. You want to understand God? You have to do this. There's no other way. <laughs> so powerful. <laughs> so Lord Narsringadev says, One who has seen or pleased me has nothing more to lament for his own satisfaction. Just like Dhruva Maharaj did great tapasya for six months intense austerity and then six months the Lord came and he saw the Lord of course in the beginning Dhruva had de material desires but when the Lord came Swamin me varam nayache now I am fully satisfied I don't want anything I don't need anything right that is the, the, the result of seeing the Lord you don't want anything more. One who has seen Krishna, why we want anything more? Just like that pastime, Ramanujacharya and his devotees were in the street and they saw this young couple and the man was really absorbed in this young girl. And they all, they were all shocked, you know, this is South India. In the times of Ramanuja, 1,000 years ago, people were highly conservative. And they see this young man, he's looking in the eyes of this young woman. So then they, they take the young man to the temple. Say, come and see Lord Ranganath. And they brought him to the temple and they saw Lord Ranganath. And when he saw the deity of Lord Ranganath, then he, he didn't bother. He wasn't so, he, the eyes of the woman meant nothing to him anymore. After he saw the beauty of the deity. Just like we have that verse, don't look on Govinda because if you see Govinda standing on the banks of the Yamuna in the threefold bending form, playing on his flute, then you'll never want to see family, society and friends. They'll have no more meaning for you. One who has seen Krishna can never be satisfied again with material pleasure, right? When we actually see the Lord. So we're so fortunate that every day we can go and see the Lord. You know, the, the, I was giving class recently to Russia and somebody was asking me about how to, how to, under, she couldn't understand the deity. One devotee was saying, having difficulty to understand the deity. So I was telling her, oh, the deity is actually one of the avatars. Krishna comes in this world as one of his incarnations in the deity form. The, he, he comes, uh, there's the original Lord, so Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, his original form. And then there's the Chaturvyuha. And then there's the Vilas expansions. And then the, the Checha Guru. And then the Archa Vigraha. 
arch, arch of Vigraha. Ar. So the Lord incarnates in the form of the deity. So when we see the deity, we feel also very satisfied. We no, so many people, they will come every day to see the deity, get attra attached, attracted to see the deity. Even though it's the same, you know, it's not like you go to see a statue, they put a statue of somebody in the, in the park, Mahatma Gandhi or some, you know, Subhas Chandra Bosch, somebody like that. You know, you don't go and see these things every day. You can't go and see them every day, you know. But the deity, the more you come and see it, the more you feel bliss, the more you feel... So that's the nature of seeing, seeing the Lord. We're preparing for that, right? That one day we will actually go to the spiritual world, we'll see the Lord there also. But every day we're seeing the Lord here, non-different. And so we're so fortunate, we have to take full advantage of that. Seeing the Lord's presence there, very powerful. Lord Nishingadev goes on, text number 54, My dear Prahlad, you are very fortunate. Please know from me that those who are very wise and highly elevated try to please me in all different modes of sex modes of mellows, for I am the only person who can fulfill all the desires of everyone. So Lord Nishringadev said, you are very fortunate. We are also fortunate. We are all fortunate souls. We, uh, Danavir Prabhu, Danavir Goswami, uh, when he was doing the Bhakta program, recruiting new devotees. They had a Bhakta newsletter. Then he brought out a book, Fortunate Souls. Everyone who comes to Krishna consciousness is fortunate, right? Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. That we become fortunate when we get the Bhakti Lata Beach, that seed of devotion, when it's planted in the heart. So, Contact with the pure devotee is creating our good fortune. The devotee asked Prabhupada, did, we be, did I become a devotee because of my pious activities? Prabhupada said, I am creating your pious activities. That is our good fortune. You, you don't just do some ordinary punya karma and get bhakti yoga. We just simply get it by good fortune, right? There's no way we can repay that good fortune. So, Lord Nishringadev appreciates Prahlad that you're very wise and highly elevated. Of course, Prahlad Maharaj is, I was reading yesterday, he is mixed bhakta, right? Mixed. He's both sadhana siddha and nidja siddha. He's, he's eternally liberated soul, and he's also perfect by his spiritual practice. So Prabhupada calls him mixed. Mixed Siddha, <laughs> right? So there, there are many great kings who are also great devotees, just like Ambarish Maharaj and uh, Maharaj Prataparudra and Chaitanya Lila is also a great devotee. And then uh, Maharaj Uttanapada, Priyavrata, these kind of kings. So Prahlad Maharaj is very wise, highly elevated. In order to take that position, to be born, of course, he's born in the royal family. And we heard how his father, Haranyakashipu, although he was a demon, he was highly intelligent. He could, he, when, when Haranyaksha was killed, he pacified the relatives by explaining to them spiritual knowledge, giving them divya gyan. 
So he was a learned person. So naturally, Prahlad Maharaj is also going to have some of the qualities of his father. And Prahlad Maharaj is also aware of that, that I'm born in a family of atheists, a very materialistic family. So that kind of birth, it's, it can be a, it's a problem. You know, it indicates, you know, that we don't have such good karma to be born in such a materialistic family. Now we have to be very conscious, very careful that these bad qualities do not come up, that they don't rise up again. But Prahlad Maharaj, because of his association with Narada Muni, he had learned also the art of devotion and how to please the Lord. Uh, as Lord Nishringadev said, try to please me in all different modes of mellows. Modes of mellows. Different mellows, different rasas, different situations, different opportunities for the service of the Lord. Try to accept every opportunity. Lord Nishingadev said, I am the only person who can fulfill all the desires of everyone. Yeah. So he is... Uh, we often address the deity like that, that can fulfill all the desires, wish-fulfilling desires. We see, for example, Panka Jangari Prabhu was telling me how Bhakti Chaitanya Swami, he had cancer. He had some cancer problem and then they worshipped Lord Nishingadev and the, now the cancer's just disappeared, just gone, miraculously. That's the power of Lord Nishingadev and prayer of the devotees, the pure devotees pray. So reciprocation is there. So in this way, Lord Nishingadev is glorifying Prahlad Maharaj. So materialistic people, Narada Muni says, Prahlad was the best person in the family of Asuras who always aspire for material happiness. Nonetheless, although allured by the Supreme Personality of Godhead who offered him all benedictions for material happiness, because of his unalloyed Krishna consciousness, he did not want to take any material benefit for sense gratification. So this is a very important point. Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about how pure devotees like Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj had no material desires. Just like Dhruva Maharaj, in the beginning he had material desire, but when he saw the Lord, then he lost it. Then he gave it up. And Prabhupada also quotes Lord Chaitanya, Shikshastikam, that I don't want wealth or followers or beautiful women. I just simply want devotional service, birth after birth. So that is important. The devotee just simply wants devotional service. So going on to the next chapter, Prahlad Maharaj is replying to Lord Nishringadev because he heard how Lord Nishringadev is very eager to give him benediction. So Prahlad Maharaj explains very nicely the mood of the pure devotee. Text number two in chapter 10. My dear Lord, because I was born in an atheistic family, I am naturally attached to material enjoyment. Therefore, kindly do not tempt me with these, with these illusions. I am very much afraid of material conditions and I desire to be liberated from materialistic life. It is for this reason that I have taken shelter of your lotus feet. So this is very wonderful. Of course, Prahlad Maharaj, born in atheistic family, 
materialistic society like all of us. We are also similar backgrounds. So we are naturally attached to sense gratification and material enjoyment. It's very easy to fall into maya. Prabhupada said devotional service, the razor's edge, right? You use a razor, one slip, boom, you know, you fall. You, you have, we have to walk along very carefully along that edge, the razor's edge. And that means following in the footsteps of the great devotees. So great devotees like Prahlad Maharaj. There are 12 Mahajans and the best of all the Mahajans, Prahlad Maharaj. It's described here in Srimad Bhagavatam that he is the best of the Mahajans. And he's showing this very, very great humility. You know, he's not trying to pretend that he's a great devotee or anything. He's a, no, look at my background. I'm born in this atheistic family. My father was such a demon and everything. Look at my position. But, he prays to Lord Nishring and he, please don't tempt me. Anybody can fall down. You just have to hold on to Krishna consciousness. Going ahead, O oh my worshipful Lord, because of the seed of lusty desires, which is the most which is the root cause of material existence within the core of everyone's heart. You have sent me to this material world to exhibit the symptoms of the pure devotee. And so this is the purport where Prabhupada talks about how there's Nitya Siddha and there's Sadhana Siddha. And Prahlad is both. <laughs> and Prabhupada mentions, or they mention uh, how uh, So Prahlad Maharaj came here, we could say the order of the Lord, Nitya Siddhas, they come ordered by the Lord to come. Just like sometimes we also say Srila Prabhupada was ordered to come, right? You just go there, <laughs> write these books. So the same way uh, Prahlad Maharaj is, uh, he's come to this material world to show the mood of the pure devotees. We need to see the example of the pure devotees. It's very important for us to see that example, how tolerant the pure devotees are. You know, so many people may say, oh, my father, my father, <laughs> you know, he's a, my father's a demon, but I'm sure the fathers are not like Prahlad's father, you know. Nowadays, your father beats you, you can call the police, right? You know, Come and get my father, he beat me. <laughs> but Prahlad Maharaj is not thinking like that. He's just concerned that he doesn't want to fall into maya. He wants to just simply remain fixed in the Lord's service. Text number four. Oh my Lord, O supreme instructor of the entire world, you're so kind to your devotee, you do not induce him to do something unbeneficial for him. On the other hand, one who desires some material benefit in exchange for devotional service cannot be your pure devotee. Indeed, he is no better than a merchant who wants profit in exchange for service. So this is a famous verse which we often hear Prahlad Maharaj saying I'm not a merchant, I'm not a businessman. You just do service to get something that is materialistic platform. You know, the man says, I give the goods, you have to pay me, give me the money. But Prabhupada said, devotional service means give up, stop doing business. We simply do service without any expectation of anything in return. Because service in itself is so satisfying. We don't want anything else. 
Why would we want anything else when we have service? That service is so satisfying. So, Prahlad Maharaj is saying like that, that how I could ask you for something, that would be not good at all, this is not the way. You're a, a devotee do, doesn't, uh, he, he says also that y y the Lord will never encourage the devotee to do something which is bad for him. Actually, the Lord sometimes will take everything away from the devotee. Prahlad Maharaj is saying, why, you know, why should I ask you for something? It, your mercy is when you take everything away from the person, when you put them in a helpless condition, when they have nothing. That is the real mercy of the Lord, to have everything taken away. Not that the Lord gives you something. And then Prahlad Maharaj then goes on to say that even if a master has to give something to his servant in order to keep the servant happy and to keep in a good, then he's not a real master. That the servant should simply want to serve the master. He, he's, he just wants to do the service. And the master doesn't, he doesn't have to flatter the servant to get him to do something. So that's another point. We see in materialistic society, you know, people work in a job and they have to get some bonus, they have to get some, you know, the boss has to encourage them. How does he encourage them? Gives them more money, gives them a break, you know, sends them on a holiday, you know, go to Jagannath Puri for a week or something, <laughs> get relaxed, calm down, you know, you know, try to keep them happy in the job. But a real master, he doesn't have to cater to the demands of the servants. And, and similarly, the servant shouldn't want to just simply get something from the master. They should be happy. People today though, they work in the job, nobody's happy, nobody's satisfied. Everybody working, they just simply get money, you know. You ask them, do you, do you like the job? They never think about it. They would never do it. Would any, you know, anybody work without salary? They could never imagine it. But that, this is Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada went to America, and he got people to join, and they, they were all working for him without salary. Prabhupada never paid people, right? Prabhupada was proud of that, that they, they came and they worked. They did selfless service for, for the pure devotee, for the Krishna consciousness movement. So that is real devotion. So Prahlad Maharaj is expressing this kind of mood to Lord Nishringadev. Uh, going ahead, text number, text number uh, six. Text number six, yeah. Oh my Lord, I am your unmotivated servant and you are my eternal master. There is no need of our being anything other than master and servant. You are naturally my master, I am naturally your servant. We have no other relationship. This is very beautiful, right? Master and servant. Lord Chaitanya said, Jivarswara Pahai Nitya Krishna Das. We're always the servant. And when we're in the position of the servant, then we're actually satisfied. When we try to be the master, then we're never satisfied. We're always struggling. But we have that materialistic consciousness that we want to control. The demonic nature is described, Ishwaraham, I am the controller, right? But we cannot even control our mind and senses. 
we cannot control our bowels, we cannot con so many things we cannot control. But we're trying to be the master. We're trying to exploit the material nature. And because we're ye, ye, ye dam daryate jagat, because ye, ye dam daryate jagat, then karshati. Ah. Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhutta Sanatana, Manashastani Indriyani, Prakriti Stani Karshati. Because Yeye Dam Daryate Jagat, Prakriti Stani Karshati. We're trying to exploit the material resources, and the result is we simply get trouble, more and more trouble. So, when we work in the position as the servant, then we're happy. Prabhupada gives the example, you take the fish out of water, fish cannot be happy. Just put me back in the water. In the same way, when we're the servant, then we're actually happy. So, Prahlad Maharaj is appreciating this. So, the conversation goes on and Lord Nisringadev, of course, he still uh, wants Prahlad that he should ask something. But Prahlad Maharaj says, Oh my Lord, very nice. Best of the givers of benedictions, if you at all want to bestow a desirable benediction upon me, I pray from your Lordship, within the core of my heart, there will be no material desire. This is very beautiful. We should all pray like that. Please bless me that within the core of my heart there will be no material desire. This is Prahlad's prayer. We should follow this mood of Prahlad. When there's no, there still be desire. The desire is for service. Birth after birth, give me devotional service. Devotional service is the, not material. That's the spiritual desire. But there should not be any material desire, nothing in relation to the body, the senses. We want to simply satisfy Krishna's senses. should be in relation to Krishna. So Prahlad Maharaj is praying like this. Of course, Lord Nisringadeva is concerned for Prahlad Maharaj that should get some kind of benediction. So then Prahlad Maharaj, will, later on he will ask, at least what about my father? And he said, I know my father has been purified because his contact with you, because he's, you know, he, he's, t he's seen you, not only seen you, but he's also touched, and you put him on your lap, right? <laughs> so by contact with your lap, he's been greatly purified. But because he was so demonic, I'm just worried that maybe he will have to go to hell because he was fighting and he was trying to kill you. So, please, can you arrange that he would not go to hell? That was Prahlad Maharaj's concern. So, Lord Nisringadev replies to Prahlad Maharaj that, Prahlad, don't worry, because you are such a nice devotee, such a great devotee, that everyone in your family, for 21 generations, they're all liberated. So, Lord Nisringadev gave that guarantee to Prahlad Maharaj, that all of his family members, and we see later on, after Prahlad Maharaj, then we have uh, Bali Maharaj, and Bali Maharaj also had some problems, but there was no question of Bali Maharaj having any punishment or being uh, killed or anything because he's the devote, he's, he's the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. He comes in the family. So he's protected by the Lord. Bali Maharaj was put to uh, Putala Loka, but the Lord went with him as the doorkeeper to enjoy the subterranean heavenly planets. And the Lord is there with him, guarding him. So that's the power of being connected to the pure devotee. 
you have such a great devotee in the family, so everyone is blessed. So we always encourage people like that, you know, you become a nice devotee and all your family, they'll all be liberated. People are always worrying how to make my husband a devotee or how to get my son interested in Krishna consciousness. Oh, my mother, like, you know, but just become a good devotee yourself and everyone will also be benefited. So Prahlad Maharaj, however, Lord Narsingadev tells him, you have to become the king. Now your father is dead, you become the king. You have to rule the world for one manvantara. All right, for the whole duration of one manvantara. That means uh, one man, in, in the one day of Brahma, there are 13 manus, 14 manus. So in that particular manu where Prahlad Maharaj came, I think it's 72 divya yugas, right? 14 into a thousand goes about 72. So for 72 yuga, uh, divya yugas, Prahlad Maharaj is ruling the world. But Lord Nishingade blessed him that he would always remember the glories of the Lord and he would constantly be able to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And at the end of the duration of his life, because he's in the material world and subject to the influence of time, then he would go to Vaikuntha. He would be liberated to Vaikuntha. So Lord Nishingadev, uh, Prahlad Maharaj rather, is a devotee of Lord Vishnu. Right? He's actually a Vishnu Bhakta, isn't it? Uh huh? Oh, really? Different acharyas of different. Mm. Mm. So, some, some discussion by the acharyas whether or not Prahlad Maharaj is a Vishnu Bhakta or a Nasringa Bhakta huh? or Krishna Bhakta. Mm. Okay, so that's. Discussion is going on. <laughs> uh huh? Prahlad Maharaj? He meets Lord Nishingadev at Nishingapali. That was Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur got the head of Lord, the feet of Lord Nishingadev on his head, and Lord Nishingadev told him, "Stay in, worship Radha Krishna, chant the holy name, and and but very soon, by the mercy of the devotees, you'll get Krishna Prem." They told him, "Stay in Mayapur." And worship Radha and Krishna. So Lord Nishringadev gave mercy to Bhaktivinoda Thakur in that way. So Lord Nishringadev has appeared several times here in, in Mayapur. He came to Bhaktivinoda, he came to Chankazi, he came. Mm, Came to Nasringapali to wash to take rest there, Nasringapali. And one time also Lord Chaitanya assumed the Lord the mood of Lord Nasringadev. Right? He was running in the street, yelling, roaring, and people all ran away in fear from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. Krishna Grava 
<laughs> Which chapter? Fourth chapter. So fourth chapter of seventh canto, texts 37, 38 and 39 describe how Prahlad Maharaj is a Krishna Bhakta. But some acharyas interpret, just like uh, when Shankaracharya says Bhaja Govinda, Bhaja Govinda, the Mayavadis, they say, that's not Krishna, Govinda's not Krishna, that's something else, you know. They just completely, you know, they just say, that's not Krishna, that, 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 Govinda doesn't mean that. Govinda means master of the senses, master of the cows, you know. <laughs> they give it a whole new meaning. <laughs> So, is there actually a planet in Vaikuntha with Lord Nishringadev? We got a mic. <laughs> Can you say what he said? He does have a planet in Vaikuntha, Lord Nishringadev. What was that? Oh. We worship Lord Nishingadev to destroy the obstacles.
But materialistic people, they worship Ganesh, and Ganesh gets his power from Lord Nishingadev. So, yeah, they worship Ganesh for sense gratification, so they can have sense gratification. But devotee worships Lord Nishengadev so they can have devotional service. Can have pure devotional service. Mm. Nice. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Sri Nishinga Bhagavan ki. Kaur Premanande. Oh. Now is the uh, Yagya, eh? What time is the Adivas? After RT. Yeah. 